Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Venom Vlog. This is episode three and it is December 3rd. Today's my mom's birthday, so I sent her a happy birthday earlier. I just finished streaming a little bit ago and I just made lunch. And once again, I'm eating pretty healthy minus the chips. Uh, so as you can see here, I made chicken on spinach with a little bit of sauce, uh, just a little bit of sesame, uh, sweet sesame gin uh, ginger dressing kind of, uh, but it's really low fat, really good. Um, and then also I made some corn, as you can see, cob of corn there. And then I put a few salt vinegar chips on there just for an additional flavor variety, I guess. Um, I am eating less. It's like smaller portions, but more meals a day. And a lot of them are like this. I have been eating a lot of spinach, actually. Um, I once watched a friend of mine named Kenny just eat chicken and spinach all the time and cut back on soda and he was like in great shape so obviously i'm not trying to get in like boxing shape or fighting shape or anything but uh my goal here is to lose 20 pounds at the least that's my hope is 20 pounds between now and the movie of venom coming out next year and i'm inspired because venom uh, in the comic books he kind of inspired me when i was 18 around that time and i was starting to lose weight in high school and then going into college because uh you know he was a, he worked out all the time he was like a workout junkie and in, in between fighting villains he usually would work out that was like his way of passing time and uh, relieving stress and trying to stay in control in some way of the symbiote i think so it always inspired me to to get in shape then and we're going to do that now especially after watching in our first episode Tom Hardy's training video. I'm, I'm working out. I'm still doing the 10 setups and 10 push-ups. I haven't upped it to 15 yet, but I probably will be doing that very, very soon. So yeah, I'm just trying to do my best and stick with this. And I appreciate the support and I appreciate the comments on and offline. I have been great. So thank you very much. Uh, so let me eat here and we'll get back to the Birth of Venom comic book. It's 4 a.m. and my roommate's sleeping um, and the walls, I'm sure, you know, they're pretty thin. And uh, But also my voice, I don't want to raise it too much because I don't feel good right now. Um, I was laying in bed. I couldn't sleep. I was writing, editing, and then I was like, hey, you know what? Let's just get up and do my sit-ups and push-ups and try to get my energy level going, drink some juice, you know, try, try to, you know, battle this as the best I can. And then after I finished, I was like, hey, well, well let's just go ahead and shoot the rest of that vlog that I wanted to do where uh, today we actually talk about the birth of Venom content comic book um, but I, as before I get into that I will say there is something you can check out on Facebook on Tom Hardy's account I believe and I'll put a link to that in this what I'm talking about in the description box below um, it's basically like a 360 camera shot of uh, Tom Hardy on the set of the new Venom movie in the apartment that we saw all those pictures from that I did in my last vlog episode. Uh, so it's like him sitting in a chair and he's like, it's like a panoramic shot and you can go around the whole room and see Eddie Brock's apartment, which actually, it was funny when I was looking at that, I noticed how similar it was to the apartment in this graphic novel. So this is the birth of Venom trade paperback. Um, I bought it digitally on Kindle right now. There's a big like Venom and Spider-Man sale. I think there's a lot of Marvel stuff on sale right now, but I noticed big discounts on Venom and Spider-Man stuff. So I thought, hey, that's cool. I'll, I'll pick this up and uh, reread this because a lot of these issues I own, but I just don't know where I put them in my collection. So I was like, well, instead of digging through it, you know, for like seven bucks, I got this. And I was like, yeah, this is great. This collects pretty much the, the introduction to the black costume, um, how it connects to Spider-Man, uh, then Spider-Man struggle with it, trying to get rid of it, and then it moving on to Eddie Brock. And then than Eddie Brock using it to torment Spider-Man. And it's kind of like their first like few encounters. I want to say it's like it's like Venom's first appearance and then um and then like his second appearance which was in this I think issue 315, 316 and 317 of Amazing Spider-Man and his first appearance being in like 299 and then into 3 issue 300. So um yeah, Marvel didn't waste time with this guy. Once he was popular, they just kept bringing him back. I think he came back in issue 315, 316, 317, which is in this one. And then in another episode, we'll talk about The Vengeance of Venom, which is another graphic novel that takes place after this. And it's like issue 331 and 32 or something like that. And then 361 and 362. And that introduces Carnage. So yeah, Marvel, once this guy was a hit, they wasted no time just, you know, once a year, if, if a little bit over a year, just bringing the guy back, you know, and telling more stories with him. Um, but in this one, it's really funny because I, I see a lot of people really going nuts over this um, this picture we talked about in my last episode, where um, where it's like uh, it's like yeah, Tom Hardy's like it's like the shot of him looking down at the camera, and you see, he's like I guess someone in my comment section said uh, that he vapes, so it's like the smoke coming out of him is from vaping. Um, 
and uh, and he's got like this harness on and everyone's like swears up and down it's um it's this agent venom thing and I, i'm sure they're just doing it for at this point just for clickbaity titles but it's just it's funny to see every everyone posting about that picture is only talking about agent venom and i'm like well, are no one even mentions that maybe it isn't agent venom uh, that it could just be him hooked to a harness uh and and that's it and it's just for a stunt uh everyone is just just going full full 100 percent forward um uh, you know a thousand miles an hour on the fact that it's an agent venom backstory and i just i don't get it even some people there's that you see like tomhardy.org like the at uh, um you know name is like right here some people even thought that was like an earpiece he was like oh he's wearing an earpiece like special secret agents do i'm like no he isn't that's just it just says tomhardy.org it's just like a, a watermark for the photo uh that he posts on instagram so it's it's people again just people see what they want to see and then once a, a title you know gets out there and it's like clickbaity everyone starts copying it and stuff and it's uh that's unfortunate because uh i think what they're releasing is really cool stuff and the fact that they're releasing little things here and there um, to get people excited and to get people talking is great but I'm sure none of them thought when they posted this picture that people were going to come up with the Agent Venom, you know, kind of storyline. So, uh, so I'd, I'd love to hear like, you know, someone from the set or like Tom or someone comment on that and whether he says it dispels it or not, because I think it's still possible they're setting up Agent Venom. I'm just not getting that from the picture, you know, uh, of course anything's possible. Basically in the Birth of Venom comic, uh, first what they do is they set up this, the symbiote, which is really just a... If, when you read it nowadays, it's such a lame backstory. It's like Spider-Man is in the Secret Wars storyline where him and all the Avengers and everyone are fighting the Beyonder. And, uh, and, and the Beyonder put them on this planet called Battle World and they're fighting like, you know, Galactus and everyone and Doctor Doom. And, um, and basically what happens is, is Spider-Man goes into a room. He sees Thor and the Hulk like come out of the room and they're wearing uh, like new clothes. And he's like, hey, we just got in a fight and you got your clothes torn up. How do you have new clothes? And they're like, oh, there's a machine in there that makes costumes. Uh, you just got to go in there and think about what you want and it'll make it for you. So Spider-Man's like, cool. And he goes in and he uses the wrong machine. He puts this helmet on and he, I guess, thinks of a costume and this little black ball shows up and then it attaches itself to Spider-Man and becomes like the black costume. And uh, and then later it's revealed that it's an alien symbiote when he goes to the Fantastic Four and he's trying to like figure out what's going on like when he gets back to Earth. And uh, and then the symbiote, you know, then that's when the story gets interesting. Like the setup where he just goes to a, the wrong machine uh, is pretty pretty silly actually and kind of boring. Um, but then once he has it and it, you can see it's like messing with his mind, it's making him be a little bit more agitated, a little less patient with people, um, a little more aggressive. Uh, and he's also in this middle of this love triangle with uh, Black Cat, Felicia Hardy, and Mary Jane Watson because uh, he proposed to Mary Jane and she turned him down. So he's kind of like, you know, as Peter and Spider-Man is kind of like, you know, trying to bounce back from that and doesn't think Mary Jane loves him. So they become like friends, I guess. And then he, you know, he goes and meets Felicia Hardy, who's in love with Spider-Man. And there's that whole backstory. Uh, and then he separates himself from the suit and the suit right at the end, he's in the church bells, they're going off. You probably, you know, they did that in the Spider-Man movie that Sam Raimi made, uh, Spider-Man 3, and the church bells go off and then the suit gets ripped off. But in the comic, the suit actually saves Peter's life because the bells are like, you know, obviously being that close or really loud, it could do a lot of damage. So the, the symbiote in its last bit of strength pulls Peter to safety and then like, disappears like melts away and stuff and and you just think it's gone after that and then it skips like you know uh maybe 10 or 20 issues or something like that and and spider-man at this point proposed to mary jane and now he's married to her and then right when he everything's going well in his life the black costume comes back in his life with eddie brock and that's pretty much like the origin they give in this is is and what i hope the movie does and why i think the military thing would be like a bad idea to mix Flash Thompson's background with Eddie Brock's for the movie because it just that feels so generic action movie and I, I'm kind of hoping this is not that you know like I feel like if Tom Hardy's taking this role he wouldn't just you know just I'm not saying he wouldn't be interested in playing like a military guy who becomes like you know Venom and stuff and becomes like Agent Venom I'm not saying he wouldn't find that interesting I'm just saying like 
I don't think it's true to the character uh, and I don't think it's what's relevant today with what's going on today in the sense that like obviously military and politics that's always going on but what's really happening right now uh, and will probably just intensify oh, between now and this movie coming out is the fact that there are people out there getting exposed for things and I think Eddie Brock's backstory in this where he talks about how um, this woman named Jean DeWolf was was killed in the Spider-Man comics by a serial killer named Sin Eater and so Eddie Brock is like writing these exposés for this uh, competing news, you know, uh, you know, paper basically to the Daily Bugle. It's like a, so it's a rival company, and he's like writing these stories, and he's like a, a great journalist, and or claims to be a great journalist, and he's writing these stories about the Sin Eater and and trying to get to the root of who he is and why he's going around and he killed why he killed Gene DeWolf and these other people in New York, um, and uh, and then so someone calls in claiming to be Sin Eater and Eddie is so you know jubilant over the fact that he might have this exclusive he doesn't really do his homework and he just takes the guy for for him at his word and starts interviewing him and writing these articles about the Sin Eater and then the real Sin, Sin Eater finds out and uh, you know and starts getting mad but then spider and it comes out of hiding and then spider-man catches them and then it's revealed that the sin eater is actually a police officer and he's not the guy that you know Eddie Brock has been interviewing uh, this whole time so Eddie Brock gets exposed for being a fraud and uh, his life you know gets destroyed people are going after him online and people you know people are going after him in the papers and in the news and they're calling him all these things and saying he's a liar and he should have done his homework and it destroys him he can't get a job after that he, he falls apart he moves to the Bronx to like a cheaper apartment um, and he just spends the last of his money on workout gear and he's just sitting there, and there working out just hating spider-man just oh just hating spider-man to, to pieces and then obviously peter parker for you know because peter took a lot of the pictures so he's just hating these two people that he learns are one and the same because he goes to a church to commit suicide he goes he's like a you know religious person so he goes to church to confess and then he's like all right i'm gonna I'm, i've done all these things and i'm just gonna kill myself i can't handle the, the backlash of, of this this failure of mine and uh, and what happens is before he could do that the suit that separated from spider-man comes down into the room with him and uh, and and wraps all over him it senses his hate for spider-man and it uses that to like pull itself together because it's dying too from the sounds of the church bell and it pulls itself together and reaches Eddie Brock and so there are parts of the story that are really really interesting and I think diving you know into it psychologically for a movie would be really really cool um but the thing that changes is um i guess the spider-man angle obviously one thing that the the movie's not going to have that this this comic book here does the birth of venom um, is the fact that spider-man is in it um and there's i think there are ways you can tell venom's story without spider-man i i really do but i don't um I, I, I'm curious to see how they're going to do that because I, I want them to keep the news reporter angle. I, I think that's just really good storytelling. Um, and uh, and I, I'd like to see that fleshed out. I'd like to see this guy who's like, you know, you know, kind of cocky, good looking, got tattoos. He works out, you know, he's just like, and he's like in the spotlight. And he's like, yeah, I got this exclusive. I'm talking to the serial killer and girls are like, oh, you're a bad boy. And he's like, yeah, I'm a bad boy, you know, and, and maybe he's, you know, really not that tough and not really that much of a bad boy. And then, and then when his life gets shattered and he's at his lowest, um, uh, hope comes in the form of like a, a dark alien creature and there's something interesting about the juxtaposition there of these of these two broken beings so um again i'm, I'm curious how how the movie's going to do it i heard rumors that they're going to do the life foundation which is um kind of what was in lethal protector it was this company that is trying to replicate the symbiote so for all i know in the movie there's you know maybe eddie brock's a reporter and he's trying to expose you know some workings that are going on at the life uh place and uh the life foundation and maybe he goes in undercover or like you know the investigative journalist and sees the suit and then in his act of like trying to escape or maybe he gets shot finds the suit and then uh and then his hatred for the life foundation and what they do and the suit maybe that's the new thing they, they do for the movie um i don't know again i'm just throwing out wild speculations because we know nothing at this point about the movie but i'm just trying to come up with things that make sense to preserve 
what I like about the Venom character and what I like about Eddie Brock in particular and uh, what I hope they don't change. Uh, I'm not saying I won't like the military version. Um, it's just I, I don't want it to come across too much like the Spawn movie because obviously Todd McFarlane was one of the artists that, you know, co-created the look of Venom and stuff. So, um, and then he went on to create Spawn after that. So it would be weird to start the movie off with this, like, you know, military mission that uh, either goes wrong or doesn't go wrong and it then sets up the rest of the story. That's kind of what happens in the Spawn movie. It opens with this action sequence where he shoots down like a plane or something and then uh, and then later finds out the people on the plane weren't as bad as he was told they were and then his conscious wants him to walk away and then he becomes you know he gets killed and becomes spawned i i kind of don't want that to be mimicked um uh, for venom i because it doesn't it doesn't feel true to the character of eddie brock so uh so again i'm i i do not know i'm just curious what they're going to do and uh and i'm looking forward to seeing more stuff uh, so yeah like i said i have the 360 uh link to the to facebook uh post you can check that out down in the description box below um and i guess at this point i just want to hear what you guys think have you read birth of venom um was that a story that interested you because i thought it was cool i, I thought it started off pretty weak i was like oh i forgot he spider-man found the suit from just like some random machine um but then once they got into the Eddie stuff and the psycho psychological aspect of Eddie and why he hates Spider-Man, um, it just shows you what a kind of a broken person he is. And I like the idea of a broken person f finding their way to do the right thing. Because it's, it's weird in this comic, he actually kills, I think, two innocent people, uh, like a police officer and then someone else. And, uh, and he even regrets it. He's like, yeah, I hate killing innocent life, but I need to, I can't have anyone stop me from getting to Spider-Man. Um... So it, that would be, you know, the, he doesn't do that later. Like by the time you get to Lethal Protector, he becomes an anti-hero. You know, after he gets over his hatred for Spider-Man, he still keeps it around. He's like, if I see Spider-Man, I'll punch him in the face. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to stop tormenting him because Eddie goes to really creepy levels in this book. He, he goes to dark places psychologically. He goes to Eddie, uh, he goes to Peter Parker's house to like torment Aunt May um, a little bit. He goes and torments Mary Jane. When the black costume remembers that Peter had a relationship with, relationship with Felicia Hardy. So Venom goes and pays Felicia a visit and beats her up. And it's pretty dark. Like he's a really dark character. But I think a lot of people, when they think of Venom, they don't really remember this time of him. Or maybe they choose not to. Um, like I forgot a, about how really disturbed he was in the beginning uh, because I think of him when I think of Venom I think of all of those mini series that I read when I was a teenager in high school that came out in the 90s when he's like uh, you know fighting with Punisher against a pyre funeral pyre and he fights against Juggernaut and Venom the Madness um, and he fights against the Mace and Venom the Mace you know and all these like characters like that like He's kind of the anti-hero in those books, and and I I I remember and choose to remember and like that version of Venom, um, and so I I you know I think that's probably the route they're going to go with the movie. But then also there's going to be the other elements. Like I heard Carnage is going to be in the movie. I'm hoping Sin Eater is in the movie because even though Spider-Man, to me I think you can take Spider-Man out of the origin of. of Venom. I didn't at first until I reread this and then I was like, no, yeah, you can lose Spider-Man. You don't, you can replace him with something else because the main thing that needs to happen is Eddie Brock's life needs to fall apart. And really what that involves is Sin Eater. Uh, you can have anyone expose Eddie Brock or just have the truth come out in, in a, a way that is, he can't control. Um, but, uh, but that's really all you need to set him up. And then the suit you can come up with any reason how the suit's on Earth. I mean, you don't need it to come from a costume machine or in the Spider-Man 3 movie, I think it just a random meteor came crashing down on it. You don't have to do something that dumb and you don't have to do something that weird like the costume machine. You can find a middle ground and I'm, I'm sure and hope the movie will um, because that's not important to Eddie's journey of becoming like a broken person into someone who might do good. And I think they, that's, you know, Fox did that so well with Deadpool um, of taking this character that is broken and then him still kind of being broken at the end, but doing the right thing. And I, that's what I want to see in the Venom movie. I want to see someone who's broken and who maybe fixes a few of the patches that's wrong with them, just enough to do the good, the right thing at the end. Um, and I think that right thing will probably be 
facing something more horrendous than him. If he's Venom and he's hardcore looking, he's big, he's monstrous, you know, got the, the tongue coming out, drool everywhere, he looks like a xenomorph, you know, on steroids. If, if that's what he is at the beginning of the movie, and then he comes across Carnage, uh, and maybe Sin Eater maybe becomes Carnage in the movie. I hope it's still Cletus Cassidy. You could definitely play that up where Sin Eater is a serial killer killing people and then someone calls in and you could have the person calling in be Cletus Cassidy. And then when the truth comes out, you know, Eddie, you know, goes and deals with the real Sin Eater and then you could have Cletus be like, well, no, but, you know, I was someone too. I was important when I was given those interviews and now everyone, you know, is calling me a liar and my you know you could have his story kind of parallel in a darker way eddie's story um and so they end up at the end of the movie you know venom and carnage and uh, and they each you know have the life they're trying to fight for to regain you know uh, so that would be that would be pretty interesting you could have cletus be like oh i now will be a serial killer because i have the carnage suit um i don't know this is just what i think about when i can't sleep but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I probably rambled long enough. I'll try to edit this down the best I can. Uh, but this is episode three of my vlog, and I'll have another vlog coming up uh, pretty soon. I think I'm going to do a little bit more of these. I'm going to, on Gotham City Bricks, I'm going to chop those down to just doing vlogs. I'm not going to, like, do TV reviews and comic reviews. It's just my schedule with work is so intense right now uh, with the holidays coming up. Um, I work, obviously, if you don't know, I work at Lego. I work in retail and sales and stuff, and I just... I just do not have the time to do like 20 different things right now. So you'll probably see a lot of video game uploads on here for a while just to fill the gaps um, in between stuff. So I apologize if you don't like those, uh, but I'll try to at least pump out a Venom vlog every week. Um, so that's way faster than we were doing them. So I'm going to try to do that from now on. Instead of one or two a month, I'm going to go to one a week so that you guys get that. And I'm going to also try to keep Gotham City Bricks going at least one or two a week uh, just for the next like month and a half. Um, but then also Twitch channel, I'll Twitch two times a week. So make sure you follow me over there as well. And, uh, and I'll have more updates for you guys for the Venom movie very soon. The next episode, I think we're going to talk about the IMDb page. We're going to go through it, look at the actors in the movie, the writers, the director, what they've done before, and what I hope, you know, that they bring to the movie outside of what we talked about here in this episode. As always, thanks so much for supporting the channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the future. Peace.